Thanks, Sarah. That's great. So welcome to everybody on um, what is not so nice Tuesday night, is it? Which is probably in our favour. That's quite good. Not that it's not the speakers that you haven't come along to, to hear from this evening, but I'm not going to say an awful lot apart from just to um, really talk a little bit about some of the things that the Chamber has been doing. If this is your first time being on one of our webinars or or the first time that you're viewing our webinars on our YouTube channel, um, we're all learning at an, an enormously fast pace. So, um, you know, it's been a it's been a, a mad few months of lockdown, hasn't it? But, you know, the Chamber has been running a lot of webinars, like lots and lots of people have. And our Tuesday evenings are a guide to. So um, this is going to be a great session this evening. And if you're around tomorrow, um, our series on a Wednesday tends to look at people and support that people need. And this week it's all about healthy body, healthy mind. So um, not that this is really going to come up, but if you're looking to break the, the cycle of that walk to your fridge more often than you would like during lockdown, then um, that tends to be one of the subjects that you know, we talk about a lot. Um, mental well-being and looking after people and looking after yourself um, is really important. So um, we will be focusing a bit on that tomorrow in the webinar tomorrow. And then just some of the other webinars that we do have coming up, um, we've got things like a guide to workforce planning. Um, we are doing a, a quite a special 1st of July session, which is completely coincidental, but when we looked at the dates for getting this one, um, so Yvonne, who's on the the, um, the session with us, one of her good friends in Dubai, um, is going to be doing a webinar for us and it's all about brand you so you know if you're thinking about how do you come across and how how are you important to your business and how is your business being represented at the moment then and um, that's something for you on the 1st of July um, and then on the 2nd of July another very hot topic that see, everybody seems to be talking about at the moment is green recovery and how we um, continue to kind of take climate change uh, and, and evolve that into our businesses. So how can businesses think about green investment and investing in um, the green economy and business recovery and how can that really influence your business and what you do for the, the rest of this year and much, much beyond. So yeah, lots of lots of things going on. Um, but it, what's interesting about this evening is um, another person that I saw just join us um, earlier was Hilary from Developing Young Workforce. Um, those of you that might have seen my LinkedIn update this week, so I'm um, a very interim chair of the Developing Young Workforce group locally and the, the DYW group works really extensively with schools, colleges and with the universities um, and it ties in really very nicely to what Wayne's going to talk about with graduate apprenticeships. But um, the thing that happened today was very, very bizarrely, Nicola Sturgeon gave a huge shout out to the developing young workforce across Scotland because they've been doing an enormous amount of work to take the regional group's work and cascade that up to national level and there'll be a lot of e-learning and other things. So um, when we're talking about a guide to taking your content and services online and Nicola Sturgeon says there's going to be a brilliant system and then the teams say, well, it's not launched yet. <laughs> It's kind of like maybe, you know, when you're thinking about how to take your content online, you think about how you're going to launch all of that and tell your customers. However, I digress. Um, so I'm going to get out of the way and introduce Wayne Paul to you. So Wayne and I actually had a really enjoyable um, conversation last week as part of the um, giving profile to organisations that are supporting the Chamber and are using um, one of our services, which is all about digital takeover. So um, Wayne gets the sponsor slot tonight. And um, and we had a really interesting chat about his role and, and how he got to where he is and, and what's really interesting about what he does. So um, watch out for that video when we get it all um, ready and live. But Wayne, if you want to unmute yourself and when I can hear you, I'll mute and you can speak and then I'll come back on. OK, thanks, Alison. Fab. Just share my screen. This works OK. Can everybody see the slide? Yep, perfect. Okay, so as you know, my name is Wayne Paul. I am the Industrial Liaison Officer for the Graduate Apprenticeship Program at the University of Dundee. And before you hear from the two fantastic speakers the Chamber have lined up for you tonight, I just wanted to take a few minutes to tell you about the fully funded opportunities we are offering to businesses to grow and develop their workforce during these difficult times. And although each of you and your businesses will be going through different journeys, it's safe to say we are all united in trying to survive and prosper through these unprecedented times. 
and whether our current climate continues for weeks, months or even years. What is clear is that businesses will need to adapt by increasing their flexibility, responsiveness and efficiency and overall working smarter to increase their return on investment. Now, how this will look will vary greatly from business to business. Some businesses will look to expand their workforce, some will look to maximise the skills and experience of their current workforce, and others will unfortunately have to reduce their workforce. But regardless of the path your business will need to take, the one constant across all businesses will be the need to invest in the development of their workforce in order to maximise their potential and grow their business. However, at a time when capacity, resource and finance will be stretched, this will prove to be very difficult for some businesses to manage. And this is where our graduate apprenticeship programme comes in. A programme that offers people of all ages and backgrounds the opportunity to gain an honours degree whilst working full time and without getting into debt. A graduate apprenticeship is a fully funded programme that gives you the opportunity to develop current or new members of your workforce at degree level while still working full time and at no additional cost to your business. Combining work-based learning and high quality education, Graduate apprentices spend one day a week studying at the university and the remaining four days of the week working in their role. This allows them to develop their knowledge and practical experience at the same time, creating well-rounded, knowledgeable and experienced individuals. We have secured 90 places for our October intake, with courses available in business management, civil engineering, engineering design and manufacturing, IT management for business and IT software development. Our programme has been designed to be as simple and easy as possible for all parties involved. You decide whether you would like to develop existing or new members of your workforce or both, and we will work with you to identify the right person for the programme and then walk you through the application process. Starting in October for 42 weeks of the year, graduate apprentices will spend four days a week working full time and one day a week studying at the university. And after four years, graduates will achieve the same level of honours degree if they studied full time. And with the programme being fully funded by Skills Development Scotland, there is no additional cost for you as a business while your employees wage for the day and no student debt for the apprentice. So what are some of the benefits you can experience as a business from using our programme? Firstly, you can develop the skill sets of your current employees at no additional cost, something that could prove to be very valuable in the current climate. If you're hiring new employees, the programme allows you to mould them around your internal systems and culture whilst they're receiving a formal education. You can attract new, motivated, high calibre employees who are eager to develop their workplace experience whilst furthering their education. Staff morale, productivity and retention has been shown to increase as they feel that the company is investing in them as an individual and they are adding value to the business. And the programme format allows apprentices to share and implement what they have learned from their lectures and fellow apprentices on a weekly basis, bringing new knowledge and skills into your business. Finally, even though a programme lasts for four years, there's no obligation on your behalf to retain your employee for the duration of this time, as we appreciate circumstances can change. So why should you choose our graduate apprenticeship programme? Well, if you're looking to hire externally, 72% of Scottish employers think job applicants lack technical, practical or job specific skills, and therefore have to spend six to nine months training new employees, including graduates. Internally, research has shown that current employees find learning more enjoyable and impactful if it's done in a practical and integrated way. And our programme addresses both of these issues by providing a richer, deeper learning experience, leaving our graduates with both the knowledge and in the industry experience they need to hit the ground running from day one, all at no additional cost to employers or apprentices. But please don't take our word for it. Here's a quote from one of our graduate apprentices who has now also become an employer. Catherine enjoyed our programme to develop her own skills for her IT business and now, having seen the value the programme can offer, has decided to recruit an apprentice who will be starting with us in October. Catherine said, it really is the best of both worlds. We work in a particularly niche sector and already I've been able to use the knowledge that I'm learning in my lectures in the workplace. I would encourage any employer to look at graduate apprenticeships for its staff because it's an investment in them and your business. Thank you for your time. If you'd like to find out more about our programme, you can email me at w.paul at dundee.ac.uk or simply ga at dundee.ac.uk. Thank you. I'll hand back over to Alison. Thanks, Wayne. That's great. Um, and I would just kind of echo that. I mean, um, no matter the size of your business, so the Chamber, we've got nine employees at the moment and we're starting a graduate apprentice in the um, after the summer time. 
Um, and Glenn came to us as a foundation apprentice. We've had a modern apprentice. And so, you know, it's not it's definitely not easy necessarily um, bringing a young person into your business, but it made a huge difference to us. Um, and whether you're a big company or a small company, you know, the, the, the young person will get the full university experience, but you get them for four days a week. And those of you that are as, as old as me remem will remember it's a bit like day release, isn't it? So it's just the same. No such thing as a new idea. <laughs> anyway, um, I shouldn't steal anybody else's thunder because they might be telling you that there's loads of things that are brand new, but they're going to pass them on to you and you can borrow the ideas. So um, I'd like to introduce Yvette and Louise to you who are going to talk about their experiences of taking their um, services online and then there'll be time at the end for questions so um, but you know um, you, you, please feel free to put things into the chat while the ladies are speaking and then we'll come in and we'll just curate a bit of a QA and a at the end so lots of chance to ask questions but um, Yvette do you want to come in first? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much, Alison. Um, welcome, everyone. Um, thank you, firstly, to the Chamber and to the University of Dundee for the opportunity to um, to speak tonight. Um, I'm quite privileged and, and, and honoured. Um, uh, obviously, my, my name is Yvette. Um, I run the Kit McGrath Education Centre in Dundee. Um, uh, we opened the, the centre in 2017 um, and since then um, we've grown significantly um, from moving from a teeny tiny space in Bank Street to our, our new home um, in Courthouse Square. Um, our centre, if you're not familiar with the Kit McGrath um, uh, uh, business, uh, delivers tuition um, both in centre and online. Um, to children from primary one all the way through to hires and increasingly for us adult learners. Um, myself, I, I am a, a specialist teacher. Um, I, I graduated uh, from primary teaching here in Dundee um, uh, nearly 15 years ago um, and I have uh, developed my career on teaching children with additional support needs and, and specifically autism. Um, but I, I didn't start out this journey as a, as a businesswoman or an entrepreneur. Um, however, um, I've, I've, I've had to learn um, all these skills very quickly um, and particularly so in the last few months. Um, although uh, as, a, as a KIP franchise, we were able to deliver lessons online, um, we were um, we delivered mostly or over 130 lessons um, in centre weekly. Um, so the prospect of moving our entire business online um, and, and, and for us it was overnight um, was quite a formidable one. Um, essentially our business um, is, is about relationships and building relationships with people. Um, so it's always been about communication and, and that has been the critical and, and, and key for us um, in this transition to, to moving online. Um, our journey um, at first glance for me, um, looking back, uh, began um, on the 18th of March. We decided overnight to stop everything in centre and to bring all of our 130 students across to our online delivery. Um, but actually, when I looked back, um, it, 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 it didn't happen overnight. Um, we had been taking account of the information. We'd been reading the signs. Um, so we had begun preparing our students and our families um, and our teachers um, in the weeks and the, the, um, the days beforehand. Um, we, we did that by um, providing them with information. So as I said before, communication was key for us. Um, it began with, with emails and notices, discussions with parents at the door. Um, we wanted to let them know if this happens, this is what we're going to do. And um, we, we made sure that um, we, we could see things were changing very quickly. So in the week or so before um, we decided to, to switch over, we felt that we needed to train our students um, very quickly to be able to use the, um, the tools that we have. Um, KIPP has a fantastic online learning platform and students were able to access that in centre, but um, very few of them had actually accessed this uh, from home. So it was a very different prospect for them, um, for their learning. 
Um, but in addition to, to making sure that our students were trained, we needed to make sure our staff were trained. And again, um, many of our staff were, were teachers, teaching during the day um, and working with us in the, the evenings and weekends. Uh, they needed to spend some time um, to get to grips with this. Um, so we did very quick training, um, but the vast majority of our teachers had not experienced delivering the lessons online until we decided um, to flip overnight. And we did that because things changed very rapidly for us. We could see that children were coming in um, uh, unwell. Um, we had to take account of safety for staff and, and for students. So um, how did we do it? Um, the, the, um, the most important thing was to make sure that everyone uh, was informed. Um, we had significant challenges, um, not least of all that we hadn't managed to uh, to drill all of our students and give them that online training. Um, so many of them were coming to this fresh. Um, and by the time we did switch over, not all staff were fully trained. Um, so it was compounded further when the Scottish government decided to cancel all the exams um, and when schools shut. So the, the challenge for us was that there was a lot of um, uncertainty for parents. There was a lot of um, information and chaos um, at that time, and there was very much a communication overload. Um, but we needed um, to to make that switch to save our business. We'd worked too hard over those last two years to to see it disappear, um, uh, and. The, the results today mean, uh, you know, indicate that, that we absolutely did the right thing. So what did we do? Um, well, first and foremost, um, we took each day at a time uh, and we contacted our parents and we used every tool that we had available to us, every free tool, um, I should add, um, to make sure that our parents knew exactly what to do. Uh, we made sure that we organised online meetings so as well as contacting all of our parents and students um, by phone, we organised Zoom meetings. Um, I'd never seen Zoom before, I'd never heard of it, as I'm sure many other people haven't or, or hadn't before around uh, the current situation. Um, but it quickly became um, our tool of choice for uh, replacing our face-to-face -face communications with uh, parents and for children. Um, we also had to stop and really think carefully about the barriers that um, we faced. So many of our um, children um, had a whole variety of um, circumstances that would create barriers for them to accessing online learning. Uh, we arranged uh, laptops for, for some students. Um, we were aware that some students were using tablets um, and our platform, iKIP, uh, unfortunately wasn't um, uh, compatible with, with certain tablets. So we had to make very make sure very quickly that we addressed the needs of every student um, who was, um, was working with us. Um, we made sure that we, we surveyed our parents. Uh, we communicated with them um, uh, and used the, the free survey tools um, we needed to know what their needs were and we needed to find out um, very quickly um, so that we could make decisions about the business that we were delivering. Um, and in doing all of those things, it gave us an opportunity to um, uh, create what we called tech checks. So before students came online with us for their lesson, um, we uh, coordinated multiple um, uh, check-ins with parents and these took 20 minutes half an hour each where we would work through um, any technical difficult any technical difficulties um, we really needed to make sure that both students and parents were prepared and understood um, what we needed to do uh, moving um, learning online meant that that a lot of students are um, uh, struggled with uh, certain elements um, 
the, the video might not have worked, they might not have been able to find the, the, the microphone. There are a whole range of things that, that we had to account for. Um, it wasn't just as simple as, as logging into a, an online account and, and doing the learning. Okay, so the things that we didn't plan for were, were some of our, our, our youngest learners, um, the, the children that we were able to manage face to face um, we work with five, six, seven-year-olds um, and children with a range of, 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 of needs and requiring a, a range of support. Uh, but surprisingly, the vast majority of, of all of our youngest learners have transitioned to online um, superbly. And it's been because we took account of their needs individually and we were able to address those um, on a, an individual basis. Um, we created plans um, and plan Bs. So when things um, didn't go well, um, if the sound wasn't working, for example, we we had to run to um, alternative um, methods. And, and in some cases, we, we resorted to mobile phones to make sure that we could speak to our students um, and work with them online. We also had to be really quite realistic about the limitations of, of the service that we were delivering um, and agree with um, a number of students that actually this was not going to serve their learning um, as we would like to. So we, we had to um, uh, discuss with parents what would be in the best interests of the students. Um, for many of our students, um, uh, a number of them have high levels of anxiety. They didn't want to be seen on, on computer. They didn't want to see their, their face. So we had to take account of all of those things and adapt. Um, and we were very fortunate that we, we had the tools to do that. Um, our iKit platform, um, which I'm happy to show you in a moment, um, uh, is was hugely um, supportive and, and responsive to that. One of the, the, the biggest learning um, curves for me was, was realising just how much we needed to step into the, the shoes of our students and our parents. We needed to understand what they were seeing, um, both from a technological point of view, but also from um, a learning point of view. Uh, it's, it's very different when you are face to face with a student. Um, we, we can pick up a pen, we can see the small details. Um, when we're online, we need to be able to take a step back. We need to listen and, and learn to look very closely at the, the small details um, that, that the learners are giving back to us. So some of the things, some of our, our, our takeaways, some of the things that I would, would um, I felt have been essential to our shift were freebie tools that we used and we used them unashamedly. Um, uh, we started off with Zoom, although I've, I've become a, a subscriber now. Um, that was, was fundamental to helping us move. Um, SurveyMonkey was um, absolutely critical to giving us the right amount of information that we needed. Um, we also use Calendly. Uh, Calendly has been fantastic um, because my time began to um, diminish rapidly and people wanted to speak with me. I needed to give them opportunities to do that so we weren't playing telephone tennis. Um, we've just been introduced to something called BombBomb, Bomb, which are video emails. Um, again, all of these things are, are free to use and, and we have utilized them um, uh, in, in the best way possible to maintain the, the communication that was so vital and is so vital for our business. Um, the we've also used social media um, heavily and that's been a real key in in keeping engaged with our, our parents um, both current parents and new parents um, and utilized it to um, continue that relationship and continue that en engagement and we've used a whole range of um, uh, competitions to keep our students involved and, and connected with us. Um, one of the, 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 the critical things for me was also the emotional guidance and support that we gave our parents face to face. 
Um, and that has been completely exacerbated by this situation. Um, so again, making sure that our parents were um, connected with us and, and engaged um, and able to access me when they needed it has been absolutely vital. So as, a, as, as an online business um, and a digital business, I think one of my biggest learning um, curves has been re recognising that, that we are available 24-7 when we are online and when we're digital. Um, and so for me, it was very much about setting clear boundaries um, in order to maintain health and, and good practice. Um, I feel that it, it, it can be exhausting um, and that was hugely important to, to say this is, you know, this is where I switch off, this is where the, 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 I draw the line. Um, the, the, the last big learning curve was remembering that actually there's, everyone is in a, a, a huge um, uh, uh, situation of change. Um, and we have been as flexible um, in every way, shape and form as we could um, for our parents to support them on their journey, support our children, um, and just to, to forgive and, and provide understanding all the way through. Um, our, our, our business has, has um, had to work on, on certain terms. We've had to bend and change those um, on a daily basis to accommodate this, this changing situation. But in doing that, it's meant that we've grown from strength to strength. Um, and the, the parents have been, um, have given us tremendous feedback as a result of that. Um, so I guess in, in many ways, um, I, I think we've, our journey has um, been probably the hardest um, four months of my career. Um, but we've we've had huge benefits um, in developing um, the the new online um, offering that we've we've been able to. It was something that parents didn't give two thoughts about um, before. We had a, a, a limited audience, um, and now uh, a vast majority of them are, are very keen to to remain um, uh, with with us online. Um, so the next steps for us are now to negotiate um, how we how we manage both and what it looks like um, in in the, the months to come. Um, but definitely, um, it's it's been a huge learning curve um, and, a, and a tremendous one from a business point of view. So, thank you. Thanks very much. Very much. Um, are you were you wanting to share those slides? Oh, look, I I I probably should have done earlier, um, but I got um, a little bit carried away. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, if you want if you want to send them on to me via email, like I can share. I know that there, there were there were just more kind of covering slides, um, oh, but yeah, I, I can yeah, I can share good. them with, um, with people if there's if there's links and whatnot on them. Um, yeah, yeah, thanks. Thanks very much for sharing sharing your experience. Um, over to yourself now, Louise. Um, thank you. Bear with me a second till I make sure this is just absolutely working. I'm just going to, as Wayne said, include my audio. And it's not allowing me to do that, so we'll just go with it as is. Bear with. Can someone just confirm they can see that? Yep. Yeah, that's your first slide. Brilliant, fantastic. Um, well, hi there, everyone. Um, my name is Louise Connor. I'm one of the University of Dundee's Marketing and Communications Managers. Um, I have a responsibility for marketing three of the university schools. Duncan of Dornson College of Art and Science, School of Humanities, School of Science and Engineering, and I have um, marketing responsibility for two of our international um, target markets. I have South Asia and Americas. So a bit of a wide remit um, and responsibility. Um, but my real passion, actually, I have to confess, is, is, is the, the work that I do with um, Duncan of Jordanson College of Art and Design. I've been with the university um, um, 
just under eight years and this would have been my eighth um, physical um, degree show this year um, but alas it was not to be. Um, so I'm just going to talk a little bit tonight um, about some of the things that we did to um, continue to give our students the platform um, they deserve. So usually um, each May we transform our art school buildings into Scotland's largest gallery for, for 10 days. If any of you have ever been in the Matty or the Crawford buildings, it's a bit of a rabbit warren, um, but it does give us a fantastic space when we turn all of our studios into galleries. Our degree show is very much a highlight for both the university and the, the city's cultural calendars. And each year we see our visitor numbers um, growing and growing. And usually we have, you know, around about 15,000, although I think two years ago we had 16,000. So, you know, really great, really great numbers. Um, Professor Paul Harris, who was our, our former Dean of Duncan of Johnson College of Art and Science, said it's hard to describe how exciting the degree show is for everyone involved. Each year is more superb than the last, a wonderful visual collection of inspirational and thought provoking work. And the degree show very much is all of that. It's the first opportunity that our students get to launch themselves professionally to the art and design world. It provides an opportunity for them to showcase their work to a wide range of people, not just their family and friends, but also curators, journalists, other artists, gallery directors, um, potential employers and many others. Um, so for it not to be happening this year is such a, was, was such a huge loss. The work that we do in, in marketing it as well um, also has to reflect the, the University of Dundee brand. It has to reflect the work of, of the students within Duncan of Johnson and the sub brand that we that we have. Um, and if you've never been to one of our opening nights of Degree Show or to Degree Show itself, here's a couple of images just to give you a little bit of a taste of it. We always kick off with a musical performance at six o'clock. There's always balloons. We have banners outside. Um, the, the building, um, there's usually a bar in the in, in one of the gallery spaces, lots of people. It's a real opportunity for people to dress up. And I, we quite often say, you know, you all, almost see the most, always see the most fantastic outfits um, at Degree Show. And we always wonder where they all, all these people come from. Um, it's also an opportunity to be show for engagement, engagement with the with the artists and designers that are performances, that is um, public engagement. So an, an opportunity to find out about some of the thinking behind the, the work. Um, and we started preparing for um, degree show each year back in in November, and it is a massive team effort. So I lead on the marketing, but I also have a marketing and events um, officer, um, Eleanor McKeady, who works very, very closely on all of the activity with me. We have um, the university's creative services team, so the designers, the videographers, they work with us creating um, lots and lots of collateral, whether it be the banners outside the building, um, signage, our posters that you see around the city, billboard artwork, digital artwork, um, no, our web team. Uh -huh. Sorry, sorry to jump in, Louise. It's okay, your slides are not moving on. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I know the I know the word when we test it, but they're they're not. Oh dear. Um, let me just see. I think I should have that problem fixed now. I think I needed to resume the slideshow. Bear with me just a second. I'm talking away, thinking you can all see my images. <laughs> Just get it to the point. Bear with it's a little bit slow. So it's great. So some of the images that I was just yes. talking about, can you see them now? Yeah, yeah. Am I good? Yes, perfect. Lots of team effort, <laughs> marketing and communications, creative services, um, and our web team. Um, so each year our web team work with us um to to create a website. So although we have gone with a very much um a, a digital showcase this year and 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 a much more expanded website, which I'll get to in a moment, um we have always had a website um that that supports the degree show because we are conscious always that our audience is not always in Dundee and able to see the show. We work really closely with our alumni um, and development team, so we make sure that we're engaging 
um, with our alumni. We always hold um, um, brunches on the Saturday of, of, of Degree Show. We work with our development team to fundraise to support the students. And we work very closely with our corporate communications team in making sure that we get media coverage for, for the event. So as I said, we, we began working on the show back in um, in November and the very first thing that we, we do is that we go out and we ask our final year students to submit work to be considered as, as, as the branding, as the, the visual identity of the show. And um, this year we chose one of our jewellery and metal design students, Beth Cameron, um, and Beth's work, we, we went to meet her. She had submitted these little pieces of enamel and we thought they were quite interesting, but didn't know any of the background to the work. We went to meet her in her studio and she started talking about how she had been inspired by all of the architectural changes taking place around Dundee. She's Dundee born and bred, so passionate about the city. And what Beth gave us, along with the artwork for and branding for the show, was, was she gave us a, a great narrative in terms of the, the inspiration of the work and her Dundee story, which was which was really superb. And then we take that artwork that, that Beth had created, we, we take it in our creative services teams, we, we use the photographers to make sure we're shooting it in really, really high quality. And our design team then come up with the poster and the Instagram post. And so this was the beginning of, of how we were pulling the collateral together. We'd also made a decision this year that we would produce a degree show guide rather than our traditional 370 page um, degree show catalogue, which would enable us to tell more of the stories behind, behind the work and behind the courses so that we could also use it as a recruitment tool. Now it's just we have to just kind of think it's this early March um, and, and we had we'd gotten all of the, the guides together we had interviewed our academics and um, we had them talking about some of the inspirations behind the work, some of the influences, which quite often you see running year after year or through each year. Um, we had our photographers go in, we had taken lots of images of the students working um, within their studios and we had started doing some video content, all with the plan of how we were going to, to, to market the show this year. And then, of course, we we went into to lockdown, and we we needed a new plan. Um, very quickly, we needed to think about what we were going to do. I think the decision was made that we weren't going to have a physical show this year on the sixteenth of of March. So very very close to um, you know, when lockdown happened, and I think naively at that point. You know, we, we're, we're going to we're going to go into lockdown. You know, potentially we, we won't be in the university for for three weeks. We're closing the university um, to the students, um, and and I think I naively thought it might be three weeks, and we might get back, and we might still be able to do some content, and we might be able to interview students, and we might still um, have an opportunity to to gather some of the things that we needed for promotion. Um, but uh, alas, that was not. Our new plan was essentially to, to create a, a digital showcase. Now, as, as you probably all know, it's always been referred to as um, the Duncan of Johnson College of Art Design, Art Design and Architecture um, degree show. Um, but we felt that what we were going to be putting on this year was, was not a degree show in the normal sense. So we, we, we decided we needed another name. We came up with lots of weird and wacky things and then settled on a graduate showcase. Um, we decided that what we needed to give the platform for the students and to really showcase their work was an expanded website. So working with our um, web team, um, we decided um, what we were, I've got some images later on, but how we were going to expand that. Um, we decided we would do a two hour live launch event because what we felt was missing and what lots of the students felt was going to be missing was that sense of celebration. We decided that would take place in June instead of May because the students weren't submitting their, their artwork until late in May. So we needed some time to give them some breathing space to complete their work. Bearing in mind they no longer had the studios to work in and were all working at home. So we pushed it back to, to the 12th of June. 
we knew that we wanted to still do a uh, prize giving because the students still deserve to have that acknowledgement and acknowledgement to their peers. We knew that we wanted to create lots of student generated story videos, um, bearing in mind that we couldn't get in any buildings and we couldn't actually interview anyone, but we knew we wanted to do it and we were going to have a gallery of, of artwork. We wanted to also create some um, course director's videos. So what we used was some stills photography. Um, we used some um, video footage that we had already captured. And those interviews that we had done with the um, with the course directors about the programmes for the degree show guide, we then created those into scripts and had the course directors narrate those so that we could then use that. And I've got an example to show you um, slightly later, um, but it was repackaging what we already had. And a lot of what we did was repackaging. We also decided that we were going to have a monta montage celebration video with the students. Um, we wanted lots of alumni engagement. So this was going to give us a, a platform to engage with our alumni, get them to give us um, congratu congratulatory messages, and also for the staff to do the same. We would do lots of social media advertising, um, as we always do, some of it organic, but because we were no longer doing the print advertising that we usually do, we had an opportunity to do more um, paid for social media advertising. So taking it into some of our international markets that we wouldn't normally reach with our, our normal ways of advertising. We also usually have lots of events, VIP events, VIP dinners. So we also wanted to create newsletters that would go out and also encourage our VIP guests. Although they were not going to be attending the show physically, they would have the opportunity to, to view the launch and um, the platform. And we also needed some way of engaging with our prospective students. So our creative um, team redid the artwork. We worked, as I said, with the, with the web team. We had um, a holding image um, for the video that we were going to be showing, the, the live performance. Now I say live and I'm, it, it was live to an extent in terms of it was a live broadcast, but all of the footage, all 70 of the pieces of content that we had created and repackaged um, were all stitched together prior to that live broadcast. So that took away any fear whatsoever of, of things going wrong. We created a story section within the website as well to make sure that we were getting some of the, the real authentic student generated content out there and some of the stories by our press team too. Um, we highlighted our supporters through the Friends of the Show initiative that we have. We had already signed up um, uh, a few sponsors this year and we wanted to make sure that we were giving them the platform that they, they deserved. Um, and then we focused on the work on display. So for each of the students, we would normally have a page on the website. It was pretty basic. It was an image, one image of the student's work and a very, very short artist statement. But what we did this year is we gave them um, much more of an opportunity to expand on their statement. And instead of there being one, one image, we allowed them to have up to 10 images. We also worked with the web team to make sure that we could have video content on there. We, we have um, animation students and many of our fine art and art and philosophy students use video in their work. So we needed a way of being able to, to showcase that as well. We made sure that if some of the images were, some of the artworks were um, of unusual sizes, that we had dimensions so that people who were interested in buying would be able to understand the scale. And our prize winners were all then acknowledged on, on the website too. So as I said, get the live launch. It wasn't actually live, um, but we were broadcasting it it live and we used a company that I had used once before um, to to work with this in terms of making sure it was streamed at the right time and that was a company called Glowcast. We had used them to live stream um, the degree show to our UNESCO partner cities um, in the year that Dundee secured its UNESCO City of Design status. Um, so they were a known company to us and uh, and they were they were pretty fantastic um, not terribly expensive to use. And in terms of taking care of the technology, they, they, they were just fantastic. 
So as I said earlier, to Geisha opening night, so we usually have a musical performance. Now, we, we couldn't have the brass band outside um, Duncan of Johnson this year. Um, so we had the debut performance of the DJ CAD choir. And we broadcast that on, on Facebook. Book. The reason we didn't do it within our live broadcast is because they were singing Californian Dreaming and um, we would advise that perhaps YouTube would then take that content down and would crash the whole thing. So we had it on Facebook at 5 to 6 on Friday the 12th and then we invited everyone once the live performance was over um, to, to then um, go and view the show but you can see from from the post I have here you know we reached 12,000 12, people three and a half thousand um, engagements for that 57 57 shares um, and 6.2 thousand views so I mean really fantastic a way to kick off the show um, so we live streamed um, the um, or live broadcast on our on our website where all of the other work was on display and we had um, a section for live chat so that gave us that ability to have that engagement with our audience um, we had created lots our design team had created lots of slides in between all these 70 pieces of content that we had we had created or um, our students and our staff had created um, the whole event was hosted by Chi, who is our um, student president at Duncan of Johnson. She, um, Chi's manner was just fantastic. She really came across with lots of enthusiasm and then gave that um, seamless continuity between each of our slides and each of our um, well-wishers and, and our student stories. We had a welcome, as we would in, in Degree Show um, on the opening nights from our, our Dean, Professor Anita Taylor. Um, the principal said a few words, our rector said a few, few words. We had an opportunity to showcase in its entirety one of the animation um, films, The Walk. Um, so some of the comments that were, were coming on our, our chat and through social media was that it was very emotional piece. It is a very beautiful piece of, man, um, of animation and it really set the tone. This was very early on in our, our two hour broadcast. We focused on each of our subject areas to give them to give them a platform. I'm just going to show you one of the, I'll not show it all, but the little video and this was the um, story that I was telling you, the feature piece and how we then took the feature piece with existing video content and images to to create a new piece of content. So you, from that piece of um, video content, you can see that um, it's it's a really good use of stills and video content and, and narration. But what it has given us, because we did these for each of our of our programs at Duncan of Johnson, it has given us um, some new content and content that we've already repurposed, but we will repurpose again for all of our student um, recruitment and conversion activity moving forward in the in the next year, when potentially we may not be able to interview students and gather content as we would in a, in a normal way. We also um, asked many of our students um, for, from each of the programmes um, to identify one of their classmates to talk a little bit more about, about their work. So we had Maisie from textiles, Marianthi from, from jewellery, um, Kaya um, from art and philosophy, and they gave you know four or five minutes pieces of content, Shauna um, from fine art, really insightful pieces of um, in-depth discussion around their work and the influences. And certainly lots of our feedback has been actually, it provided an opportunity 
for for the viewer to to find it far more than they ever would when they're going around um, degree show in a traditional way. Cameron Wilson, one of our members of staff, he he really took the um, um, our, our night um, to heart and um, and dressed up for the occasion to provide some well wishes. Um, and we had many alumni um, from throughout the years and um, going right back, actually providing well wishes um, to our students too. Um, we also highlighted our, our Friends of the Show initiative, um, again, to, to thank, as I said earlier, the sponsors. And we gave congratulations to, to the whole class and rounded up the evening by showcasing a video of images that all of our students across Duncan of Jordan's and all the fourth year students had submitted from throughout their four years. So of them on nights out, on their, in their studios, um, a real sort of celebratory way to, to end the evening. We also did um, our usual media engagement and um, working with our corporate comms team, gathering lots of images, um, human interest stories, topical stories, quirky stories. And we spread that word through our press releases, following up with journalists, giving exclusives, micro and local. Um, we are just, you know, days since the, the show closed. And so we haven't done the roundup of all of our um, media coverage yet, but but we are aware that we we had more, I think, than we would normally normally have. And feedback was really really great in terms of the type of show that we had provided. Social media content plan before and after the show um, is um, taking all of the content and repurposing it um, to make sure that what we were using on the opening night, we were then repurposing again during the week for social media and picking up all of the other stories that we had. Um, we also used last week um, of the show to, to reach out to our applicants. One of the things that we always do during today's show is we invite our offer holders in to the building so that they can um, see um, the work and they can see what four years at Duncan of Johnston and um, where that takes you. Um, but this year, obviously, we weren't able to do that. So we reached out to them with lots of emails. Um, and as you can see here from, from, from some of the stats um, within the United Kingdom, you know, 495 applicants. Um, we were also reaching out to the States, to China, to India, to Cyprus in terms of engagement with the communication that we were putting out. And I think that's that's one of the things I would would absolutely say what the show allowed us to do this year and the way that we delivered it was to reach an audience that far ex exceeded who we would normally be able to to talk to and and showcase the work to. We were able to use this as a great engagement tool for our international applicants and international offer holders. We were able to share um, the opening night and, and the showcase with our partners in, in China, in the States, in India, globally. And we were also able to invite back our, our alumni, invite back, that's not really the right way to say, but um, we were also able to invite our alumni to, to, to watch the showcase wherever they were in, in, in the world. Um, and, and there are many in all corners. So um, we were, um, were delighted with the feedback that we've received. We were delighted with the engagement and the opening event um, had um, 5,343 views on our broadcast. And that is um, certainly equates to what we would have in terms of an audience visiting the show on opening night. So um, thank you. Thanks very much, Louise. And uh, turn my camera back on. Um, yeah, really interesting to hear from both of you, to be honest. There's obviously, um, you know, Yvette, it's, it's been your services and, and Louise, it's been your content um, that you've you've managed to um, go virtually with. Um, and certainly, you know, what you were just kind of finishing off there with Louise, you know, attracting a global market, you know, is, is now what you can do online. Um, you know, people are not having to having to travel. They can do it from the comforts of their own homes. So you're not just looking at the region or Scotland. Um, you know, you can you can certainly target target wider markets with it. Um, we've only got a couple of questions in the chat. Um, one quick one from Michelle Louise. You'd mentioned the live stream business. Was that I want to call them Glowcast? Is that what you called them? Glowcast. Yes. Um, they're based. Um, they're based in Edinburgh. 
Um, but yeah, fantastic company to work with. They do live streaming of a whole host of different events, award ceremonies. Um, as I say, they had worked with us to stream the degree show live, and that was really live um, a good few years ago. And they took all of the pains out of the, the technology issues that we were going to face in terms of putting, <laughs> to putting that up on, um, on YouTube. And they, they stitched everything together seamlessly for us. Perfect. Great. Hope that helps, Michelle. Um, Mary, I know that you've posted a, a question that's that's probably relevant to both speakers, to be honest. I don't know if you're able to unmute yourself and come in and ask. If not, I can ask it for you. Maybe not. OK, um, so Mary was asking, um, Mary Greeny from Rossi's um, Young People's Trust was asking, so post COVID-19, what aspects of the business change, if any, will you continue to use? Don't know who wants to go first. <laughs> Perhaps, Yvette. Yeah, um, uh, quite, quite, quite a lot of um, change in terms of um, engaging with parents in different ways. Um, you know, before we relied on on face to face, um, but but it's it's pushed me further into um, really um, embracing lots of digital ways to to engage and and manage that um, interaction. Um, but equally, continue to develop our our online service um, uh, and and promote that. Um, we, we're restricted by our, our territory um, as, a, as a franchisee, so um, we, we, we can't grow that way, but we can certainly grow within um, the, the local region. Um, and I think that's much more of a prospect now than it was previously. Mm -hmm. And what about yourself, Louise? Will there be aspects of the virtual degree show that, that you take forward when, um, I, when I restrictions think allow? <laughs> Um, I think we're very hopeful that at some point later this year we will still be able to bring to Dundee the the physical, perhaps not on the, the, the scale that we would normally, but some kind of physical show. I think viewing and appreciating art online is one thing, but actually seeing it and engaging face to face with 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 the artist is is another. And and that's something I think that is really important to us as an art school. But one of the things um, our dean said um, following our, our, our launch event was, can we do this and a physical show from now on? Um, I should say that in terms of budget spend for what we spend on the show this year, it was a third of what we would normally spend in terms of our, our marketing activity and pulling the show together. So there were cost savings, which were great, but um, but I think we all miss the, the physical the phys physical event. Um, and I noticed that Alison just put a question in about, about buying art. Anecdotally, I've heard that some of the students have done really, really well out of the show this year. Um, I, I personally know quite a few people who have bought, and I wonder if perhaps because they can browse those pieces online and they can go back and look at it again and again has actually benefited the students. So who knows? I mean, if you're not doing it with a glass of wine in your hand, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Perfect. Thanks very much. Um, I don't know if anybody has any further questions, to be honest. Nope, there doesn't seem to be. I mean, the, the two of you have obviously covered um, covered a lot there, and you know, lot, lots of takeaways um, for people to um, you know kind of implement themselves. Um, I guess just conscious of time as well. Um, if nobody else has anything else that they want to come in with or ask um, either of the um, either of our speakers, Louise, I'm, I'm guessing the, the content from the degree show can people still view that? I mean, I'm guessing the stuff on Facebook will still be there. 
Facebook's still there, but um, our website will will be there for for a full year. We we won't be taking it down. Um, we will continue throughout the year to promote our students. So if our students are going on to, to do great things and they're telling us about perhaps an exhibition they're having or anything exciting, we, we continue to promote them, not just in the year ahead, but going forward. So the website, I'll actually just put it in the, the chat mm -hmm. and you can also watch the broadcast. The broad, full broadcast is on the web page as well. So that's probably the best way to view it. Perfect. Thanks very much, Louise. I'll just give you a minute or two to to get that um, that link within the chat. Um, thanks very much, everybody, for joining us. Um, as Alison's mentioned, we've got a few a few more webinars coming up as well. Um, we also have launched launched perhaps not the right word um, put out a member survey today for forthcoming webinars um, just to get a feel for what what people are looking for, what support they're needing going forward. Um, we've had a jam-packed uh, webinar series over the last three months. Um, we've done over 50 webinars, over 300 registered to attend. Um, but, but going forward, you know, we, we kind of started this as a, as a short term, um, but it, it's certainly not going to be for the short term at the moment. So, um, you know, going, going forward, we're now kind of looking at long term and really what businesses in the region need support with. Um, so we've got it out on social media. It should be in your inbox as well. So if you've got a spare five minutes, later today or sometime this week, then really appreciate your feedback on on the member uh, the webinar survey it would be good to good to hear. Um, that's all from me um, and Alison. So thanks very much to both our speakers for joining us and um, great to hear from both of you. Thanks to everybody for attending and um, enjoy the rest of your night. It's not raining where I am. Hopefully it's not where you are. So um, yeah, head out, head out and get a wee bit of fresh air if you've not been out of the office already. OK, thank, thank you. you. See you later. Thank you.